So it's super early right now and we're actually doing something we haven't done for you guys in a while. We're targeting catfish. Now, uh, a lot of you guys have been wanting us to target catfish, so we're out here doing it. Lake Mead, got birds over here going crazy. But we're out here at Lake Mead, we're targeting catfish. It's going to be a catfish catch and cook. We're actually going to cook them out here also. So we're not going to be picky though if we see stripers because it is boiled, like they're starting to boil around here. If we see stripers, we're going to catch them too and cook them out. Uh, no matter what, we're going to be eating something this morning for breakfast. And uh, either it's going to be a catfish or a striper, one or the other. We're out here with Jeremy. You guys saw him? What's up? You guys saw him in our last rattlesnake video. We might do that again, too. If you guys if you guys want to see another one of those, let us know. But other than that, you guys can see we got some fish on the grass. Uh, we're out here. we got anchovies. we got corn, worms. we got everything we're going to need to catch catfish or striper. we also got some topwater lures and everything. So it should be a fun day. And let's see if we can't get some. I'll start with an anchovy. Why not? So with these things, super, super brittle bait, super soft on the hook. So you want to keep them cold. As you can see, he's still frozen. Now what we do is um just come up, cut off the head, cut off the tip of the tail here. Just use those as chum if you want. And this you can cut it into three or just cut it in half. I got fairly smaller hooks, so I'm gonna cut it into three here. And then you just throw that on your hook. So all I got is a little Carolina rig, cheap little Carolina rig with a nice little size hook there pretty much everything in this lake will eat anchovies they're real oily I guess you could say catfish will tear these things up striper will tear them up the only problem is that they fall off the hook super easy so you you gotta keep them cold pretty much like I said I got a fairly smaller hook here so I'm just gonna grab a piece and I like to run it through I like to aim for the spine if you can run it through the spine usually I find that it'll stay on your hook a little longer I personally I'll run it through everyone does it different but I run it through just like that like I said this baits fairly soft so if they bite it, they're going to usually rip that off and get hooked almost every time. You can see there's still a little bit of the point sticking up. Oh, it's a bass. Nice bass. Jeremy with the hook up on top water. First fish of the day. Nice bass. Nice. Sweet. That's a nice one. We're out here going for catfish, but a top water morning bite will work. Beautiful fish. Why'd you no have to scum. do that, man? Why no you, now I don't want to fish with bait. Come on. <laughs> now I don't want to fish with bait. <laughs> so we're only going to sit in each spot about 10, 15 minutes. Um, without a bite, then we'll move. We're not trying to get one catfish after sitting for an hour. We're going to catch a couple pretty quickly. So we're going to go ahead and make a move really quick. Sit there about another 10, 15 minutes and just keep moving around until we catch them. Once we find them, we should be able to get a couple of them. The swirls. Two little swirls right next to each other. Fish. So how was that uh that earthquake? Oh, that was really fun, huh? Wow. You have just felt an earthquake now. <laughs> Pretty much what it feels like. If you guys watch the videos, you guys will have seen I actually went to Ridgecrest. If you guys have been watching the news at all, if you don't live under a rock, um you guys will have seen, oh, I got a bite. But you guys will have seen Ridgecrest is, it, it was getting a lot of earthquakes. And they're still getting some earthquakes, not that many. But uh, I actually went there to cover it. They got hit by a 7.1 and we went after that to pretty much see everything that was happening. So go ahead and check that out if you're interested. Uh, they're starting to boil. So as you guys know, when they're boiling, they're chasing shad. So anything shad imitating, like this top water right here, is perfect. All right, so those of you that don't know what a boil is, a boil is when a ball of shad is swimming in these shallows and it just happens to run across a school of striper. They'll push it to the surface. They start attacking these shad that are on the surface and it looks like the water's boiling. Oh, That's he's a good shad. size. Right oh, he just got to blow up. He just got to blow up. Nice. Very nice.
Woo. Oh yeah. He hit it. Hit it? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yep. Yeah. Over here, to, over here, big boil to the left. Hurry up, Jeremy. Oh, he got off. Right there, big boil. Yes. I need to back up because the sun. The sun's gonna ruin the footage. We got a double hook up. That GoPro's on it. You want to I know. Push it, you can. I I'm going to. You guys get them. You guys get them. I want to get a blow up on film. Where's your bait? <laughs> right when I went to scratch my nose, dude. Oh, this one's a little better. That one was on already. Yeah, I know. I just, I turned that a little more closer. Hook up. You look. You look down there. Oh, you lost them? No, I'm kidding. Oh, okay. Oh, with the double. The double hook up. There we go. I could, oh. I got this camera going. Oh, double, triple hookup. You know I had to get this. Get on the bike. You know I had to get on. Look at it. There we go. It's about time, man. I haven't caught a strike in a long time. Slow down, buddy. Nice, I got that one on film. Beautiful. So right after all those boils, you guys saw us catch all these stripers. So now what we're actually gonna do is we're gonna flame up right here on the boat. You see I brought the whole setup. We're gonna cook them here on the boat. We're gonna have an awesome breakfast with these guys too. How many did we catch? Eleven. Eleven? That we kept, yeah. Oh man. A lot of filet. Jeremy hooks up using bait. Let's see what it is. And a catfish. catfish. Perfect. Sweet. Bro. Oh, catfish you, catch and cook. He made it happen. There you go. It's exactly what we needed. Oh, yeah. Nice little channel cat. Oh yeah, he'll eat up good. So we got this catfish now. As you guys can see he's on the cutting board. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put him out really quick and then we're gonna fly him. So now that he's pretty much out. I'm gonna go ahead and sharpen this knife. Number one priority of cleaning catfish is a nice sharp knife. I already have a, a video on how to clean catfish. If you guys wanna see a full in-depth video on that, go ahead and click the link right here. It's an older video, people liked it though. I gave pretty good instructions. So we're gonna go ahead and clean this guy real quick. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and cook him up also. We got the skin off of him, now we're just gonna do it like any other filet. I got this little thing right here to cook him with. We use this whenever we're hunting, camping, just about anything. Then, got myself nice pan here and all I brought for seasonings is garlic salt pepper and I got some butter that's all you need that's all I'm gonna use at least so <laughs> it turns out uh, we forgot a lighter last uh, catfish <laughs> catching could we forgot a lighter too so we're horrible about that nobody ever carries lighters anymore so uh, we're in the comforts of the marina here first of all because we forgot a lighter we bought one from the marina and second of all it's just nice in here it got super windy out there there's white caps you can't keep the boat still I don't want to be spilling stuff everywhere and then also on top of that see, the audio is bad in the wind. So it's nice in here, it's cool also, so we're going to go ahead and get to cooking right now. So you guys can see got the catfish here. It's just one catfish. I'm going to be using to season this guy. I'm just going to take it very simple, very very simple. The butter, that's going to be put in the pan, black pepper and some garlic salt. So we're going to be using, now the first thing I'm going to do here I'm just going to take some of this garlic salt and just sprinkle a little healthy dosage over the fish. I'm going to do it on both sides. I'm going to put some pepper on them. You just grab it and you can kind of just rub up the rest of that seasoning on the other side of the fish. What we're actually going to do is we're almost going to do a comparison right now with some striper. So I'm just going to pull out two fillets of some striper 
two nice size fillets, just like that. I'm gonna clean them off. Then we're gonna put them side by side, cook them exactly the same. We want two pretty good size fillets, there we go. Perfect. And then um, we're gonna go ahead and cook them exactly the same and see which one we actually like better. That's a cool little twist on the video, I say. So here's both the fish. I haven't, I haven't seasoned up the striper yet. I cut the striper into manageable pieces also. Now, I want you guys to comment down below which one you guys will actually think tastes better. And uh, another thing to note is the color difference in the meat. Uh, catfish isn't as much of a white meat. It's got more of like a yellow tint to it. And striped bass, as you can see there, it's a beautiful white meat. So uh, go ahead and comment that down below. Also, striper's more firm of a fish, I'd say. So let me know what you guys think. So we're gonna go ahead and cook them up. We're gonna, we're gonna tell you guys which one we think tastes better. So it's lit now. First thing we're gonna do, first things first, you get your butter here. So we're gonna take a good little chunk of butter. That's probably a lot of butter, but uh, it'll work for now. So we're gonna go ahead and throw it on there. Melt your butter on your pan. So we decided to move it lower so the wind's not blowing it as much because the wind was blowing it pretty good. All right, so now that our butter's hot, it might even be too hot actually. This thing's a lot hotter than I thought it was gonna be. All we're gonna do is take our fish, put it on the, put it on the pan. So one thing to keep in mind when you're cooking fish like this is you're cooking it over very hot heat, so a lot of times it'll cook fast. You just wanna keep an eye on it. All right, so we started off fishing for catfish this morning, but uh, the striper started, start, started to uh, start boiling on some shad on the surface. So we decided to go after some stripers. Yeah, we ended up with 11. 11 stripers, that's a pretty good day. And what was that, like 10 minutes worth of boils? Yeah, 10 minutes. If that, no, they were quick. They were very fast boils, they didn't last all day long. This is looking amazing, I just realized I forgot to put a piece on, but it's looking like it's turned out great. A lot of the thinner pieces are cooking, uh, getting flaky faster. So of course the thinner pieces are gonna cook faster, that's what I meant to say. And it turned, it's looking like the catfish isn't as flaky of a fish. The catfish isn't really flaking like the striper is. It's all done, we'll check it out, but pretty safe to say that the catfish is the underdog. So uh, we'll see if it makes a surprising little knockout punch or something and uh, beats out the striper, but I highly doubt it. It's worth a shot though. We're gonna go ahead and let that cool while we clean up a little bit. And then after that, it's time to eat. So we're gonna go ahead and give this fish a test now. You go ahead. Catfish first. Striper. First pick. This is a little piece of that. Right? That's striper. This is striper? Yeah, it's white. A little bit white. Try striper first. I'll try the, the other half of the piece you got. Good. I'm not the biggest fan of fish, but it's actually really good. Yeah, I didn't get to cook it at the house, so I didn't get to take care of it as much as I normally would. So it's a little bit on the dry side, a little bit dry and not as moist as I normally would like it, but for just cooking it out here, it's pretty darn good. I'm not gonna lie. So now go ahead and chase the catfish. First off, it's very, very slimy, and it's got a little bit more of a fishy taste to it, and it's not as firm as the striper is. Still pretty good though. It's still pretty good though. The only thing is you'd have to get past the texture. I can, I can see why people fry catfish, because I've tried to cook catfish many other ways. I wrapped it in aluminum foil, and I baked it, and I've done this now. Every time, it keeps like a sliminess to it. It's not that it's undercooked, it just, it, it keeps it, if you're not frying it, it's gonna keep that little bit of sliminess to it. Like he said, it's a little bit softer of a fish, it's not as firm, but to be honest, it's still pretty good. Which one, which one do you like better? Striper. You still like the striper better? Yeah. I gotta go back in for another piece to eat. So how's catfish? Here's striper. Striper's way better. I think I gotta agree with you on that one. The catfish, I'm not gonna lie, the catfish has got a really like unique taste. That's good. But the striper, you just can't beat it on this one. Alright. Alright. Let's see here. Now we got senior. I was touching that chicken liver. Oh, do we got forks or something? Nah, we're good. Just don't just don't bite the piece where your finger's touching. Well, too late. <laughs> what was that? Striper? That was a striper, huh? Real firm? 
A real firm white piece. Yeah. And then the catfish will be like a more of a yellowish color. Yeah, that was pretty delicious right there. Oh can't. yeah, I can tell the catfish is yellow. Is that it? I think so. You got the little piece. Was that the catfish or the? It's I, actually pretty good. Both I say of them they're are good. they're super super close. I All like right, them both. So if I would have went to a restaurant, ordered catfish, and ate this, I would have thought it was pretty good. Striper, I would have thought it was pretty good. But now I'm tasting them side by side. The striper is like that much better. It's, Barely, it's, huh? Yeah, it's pretty good. But um, you you forgot the major thing. Lemon. Lemon. Without <laughs> lemon, no fish is good. Oh, so, uh, no. what was Juju? <laughs> what was Juju? You should play back that part of Juju going. Uh, Juju, how important is lemon? It's so important without it, this earth would fall off its gravitational field. If you guys want to see us do more stuff like this, go ahead and comment down below. Awesome how it turned out. But other than that, I want to thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you outdoors. See you outdoors. See you outdoors.